In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at how GeoTime can be used to visualize communication data to help us understand events and activities that have taken place. In this scenario, police have intercepted a large number of weapons. With their suspect in custody, they were able to subpoena his cell phone records. What we're going to be doing is taking a look at these CDR or call detail records as visualized within GeoTime's 3D Time Viewer. The communication records we've got for our suspect show all the calls that he's been making from his cell phone. As part of our investigation, we're going to take a look at the calls that have occurred at the time of the transaction with our suspect and the supplier of the weapons. In order to do that, we're going to send these records across to GeoTime for visual analysis. GeoTime has a patented 3D time viewer allowing us to see when events have taken place not only from their location but also when they took place in time. Let's take a look at the calendar view within GeoTime to see the time in which these calls were made. Here we can see that the first call made from our suspect occurred at 7.55 a.m. There are three subsequent calls that have occurred. Let's take a closer look at the first call. This first call occurs from our suspect to our suspected arms dealer. Let's make a note of this first call as part of our report. GeoTime's built-in reporting tool allows us to capture key elements of our analysis. Once we've written in our notes, we can go ahead and create a visual bookmark. This visual bookmark will allow us to recall the view showing us the call from our suspect to our arms dealer. The next step of our analysis will be taking a look at other communication events that have occurred from our suspect. Let's advance time to see what other calls have been made. Here we can see another call event has occurred. This one occurred at 8.13 in the morning to the same suspected arms dealer. Now we're seeing the full range of records from our suspect. We can see here that at 8.25 he makes a call to an unknown entity. We're going to make a note about the unknown entity as this information can be used to further our investigation. This unknown entity could be implicated as part of the arms deal. Now that I got this information recorded as part of my report, I'm going to work with investigators to acquire the call records for our unknown entity. Let's go ahead and bring those in. Here we've got our second suspect who has now been implicated as part of this arms deal and we're going to bring across the relevant communication events that have occurred. Instead of replacing the data that we've already loaded in GeoTime, we're going to merge these events into our existing analysis. We now have our new unknown entity that's highlighted here. As we can see, this unknown entity had been communicating with our suspect. Let's step through the communications that have occurred throughout that period. As part of our analysis, we may want to differentiate between the multiple entities that we are analyzing. For our suspect, I'm going to go through and put his mugshot in as his icon representation. I'm also going to go ahead and put an icon in for our unknown entity. This gives us a way to visually differentiate between the different entities within our analysis. Let's take a look at the calls that have been made. Here we can see the first call that occurred earlier on in the morning where our suspect is contacting this new entity. A few minutes later, we can see that our suspected arms dealer is returning the call of our suspect. We assume that this call is to confirm the transaction that's about to occur. Let's move ahead in time and see the rest of the communication records. Here we can see some movement that's occurred by our suspected arms dealer based on the, the communication events that have occurred. Here's a call he makes to an unknown person in red. Calls that have been made to unknown persons are located here in our no location bar. As we continue to move forward, we can see that there's a potential meeting point here with our suspect and the suspected arms dealer. Let's make sure that we include this as part of our report. We'll go ahead and create a visual bookmark, which is going to allow us to come back and recall this view. Here's where we believe that the transaction occurred in which our suspect was able to acquire the weapon. Let's continue to look at the rest of the communication records. Here we can see that a few communications have occurred with another unknown suspect. What we're interested in knowing is who our suspected arms dealer was communicating with. We've now got our third suspect as part of this investigation and we're going to merge in their communication records as well. 
We're now visualizing three different communication records, all simultaneously. Here we can see that we have interlinked relationships between these three callers. Let's go ahead and change the visual look of our third entity. Let's now start taking a look at the communication events that have occurred with our orange entity. The first communication event that occurred is here with our suspected arms dealer. This communication event occurs just before the meeting between our suspect and the suspected arms dealer. Let's make sure that we include this as part of our report. Now let's continue to look at the rest of the communication records. What we can see here is that the entity in orange has communicated with another entity in red. Let's take a look at who else has been communicating with our suspect in red. To do this, we're going to use the link analysis tool. The link analysis tool will allow us to evaluate what other entities are connected to our entity in red. Here we can see with just one degree of separation, our arms dealer as well as our entity in orange are both connected. This leads us to believe that the entity in red is in fact our arms dealer, who's been working with the entity in green and orange in order to facilitate this transaction. Let's take a look at the final few calls that have been made. Here we can see several calls that were made after the transaction by our entity in orange to our new suspected arms dealer. This leads us to believe that there was a confirmation of the transaction made. Let's make sure that we record this as part of our report. This new information could be extremely valuable to investigators. Now that we've completed our report, we can send off a copy to investigators. We can also go through and interactively step through our investigation. Here you can see all the visual bookmarks that we've captured, which annotate and present the relevant movement and communications of our suspects. This allows investigators to get a much more visual understanding of events and communications that have occurred. By being able to visualize these communications and movements over time, we're able to rapidly discover the relationships and activities of entities over both geographical locations as well as time.